So welcome uh, to our Lutheran Church Redeemer Sunday, August 2nd Zoom service, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. So to get us ready, today's first reading from Isaiah, God invites all who are hungry or thirsty to receive food and drink without cost. Jesus feeds the hungry multitude and reveals the abundance of God. And at our Eucharistic tables, we remember all who are hungry or poor in our world today. As we share the bread of life, we're sent forth to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Let us begin with our prelude, Prelude in C by Dietrich Buxtehude, played by Molly Rabin. As we begin our worship, if you've not already done so and are able, I invite you to go ahead and light your candles. And so we will begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, 
through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading 
from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all, <clears throat> near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. The second reading is from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and uneasing, unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, 
he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace be to you from God our Father, in the name of the Lord, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, who is good to all whose compassion is over all that God has made. Amen. Well, now that I have become a grandfather to two beautiful granddaughters, and also known as the Grand Dude, I have become reacquainted with both the joys and shared responsibilities of parenting and grandparenting. Now, perhaps some of you remember the days of one spouse saying to the other, hey, the baby is hungry. To which the other may say, well, why don't you feed her? Or, the baby is cranky, to which, why don't you read her a book and put her to bed? Or my personal favorite, hey, the di baby's diaper needs changing. Well, it's your turn to change him. Oh, okay. You feed her, you put her to bed, you change him. Where there is love for a spouse or a child or for a neighbor, there is shared responsibility for doing the necessary acts of love. Are you with me? Are you in? Thumbs up, right? Okay. And by the way, if you have any comments during the sermon, you go ahead and use the chat bar. So today we have heard the story of one of Jesus' greatest miracles, one familiar to most people called the feeding of the 5,000. Now the cool thing about this miracle is that it wasn't just a magic trick, like changing water into wine as a sign of Jesus' power. It wasn't only a healing story where one person's health was restored. It was an act which required the participation of the 12 disciples, and I'm sure many more disciples and followers to carry out Jesus' command. You give them something to eat. To at least 5,000 people who showed up in the desert to hear Jesus preach, which actually was more like 10 or 12,000 people when you add women and children. Very important number to add. So it's a miracle of shared responsibility, because I think that even greater than Jesus turning five loaves and two fishes miraculously into a meal for thousands, was the miracle of getting 12 disciples to share his compassion and organize the distribution and resources for all those people to eat. But of course, as in any story of the Gospels, this miracle did not happen in isolation, just out of nowhere. The story has a context and a meaning beyond even the miraculous details. Matthew places this story about halfway through his telling of the Gospel. For back in chapter 10, Jesus had been going about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and sickness. And Matthew says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers for the harvest. So Jesus sent out his 12 disciples into the towns and villages with his authority to cast out evil spirits and cure every disease, which they did. And when they returned, he taught them in the crowds about the kingdom of God in many parables, which we have been hearing about the last three Sundays in worship. But the more immediate situation for today's gospel is the death of John the Baptist, who had been imprisoned by King Herod for speaking publicly about the many sins of Herod, not only for his infidelity, but for not caring for the people and for letting them suffer from poverty and hunger. In the passage just before the gospel today, King Herod had killed John the Baptist at the king's birthday banquet and displayed John's head on a platter for his wife. Just one more example of the depravity of King Herod's regime, which created so much fear and suffering. Well, this is the setting for today's gospel. Jesus heard about John the Baptist's beheading and he withdrew by boat to a deserted place by himself to grieve, to pray and ponder his next move. He must have known that his own life was now in danger. But the crowds heard that Jesus was there and they came to him on foot from all the towns around. So when Jesus arrived on the shore, there was this great crowd of people with all their sick relatives and Jesus had compassion for them and cured their sick. When evening came, there were thousands of them still there and the people were getting hungry. Of course, the disciples knew that they didn't have enough food with them to eat, to feed so many people. So they suggested that Jesus send them home or into the nearest town or market to get food and shelter. It would be good for local business, Jesus. They might even have said. Instead, Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. But the disciples explained to Jesus that they did not have enough. All they had were five loaves and two fish. For 5,000, Jesus? So we read how Jesus took these five loaves and two fish, blessed them, and handed them out. The disciples gave them to the crowds. And lo and behold, all had enough to eat, and they were filled they even had leftovers, 12 baskets full. 5,000 men plus many more women and children all were fed. This is the good news of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if we aren't to get bogged down in the details like, how did Jesus do that? Did he have the magic words to create more bread and fish out of nothing? Did more people begin sharing what food they had because of the example they saw from the one who gave five loaves and two fish? Did food vendors show up in food trucks to donate food in this literal food desert? That's where it is all speculation. And many a sermon has been preached about such things. We're all speculating. But one of the lessons we can draw from this comes from the comparison of Jesus' reaction to the crowds of hungry people. Compassion, compared with that of King Herod, who would only have fear and disdain for the suffering people and see them as a problem. King Herod heard the prophet named John speak out on behalf of the suffering, calling for repentance, and all King Herod could do was throw the prophet in prison and then cut off his head to silence his voice. But the truth of John's words remained. The king was still a cruel, narcissistic fraud whose only response to suffering was to create more suffering, not to repent, but to get revenge. When does that ever happen? But then there was Jesus, who out of his grief over John's death, and even while facing danger for his own life, had compassion for the crowds of human beings who came to him and was compelled to act. The Greek word from the gospel that Jesus used, esplogniste, tough one to say in Greek, is a gut-wrenching, intestinal twisting, visceral emotion of care and empathy for another, which comes from the depths of feeling, from the gut, we'd say. 
we say compassion, which means passion with or for someone who suffers. This feeling moved a Samaritan to save a man beaten for dead at the side of the road. It moved Jesus to heal many and to raise a woman's dead son. It moved a waving father to have mercy on his prodigal, foolish, repentant son. We see so many examples throughout the Gospels for this depth of feeling for others, not only from Jesus, but from ordinary human beings in everyday situations. So guess what? Jesus didn't only call his 12 disciples to share his compassion and go feed hungry people themselves. Jesus calls you and everyone who follows him to also have compassion for the sick, the poor, the hungry, the grieving, and be compelled to act out of love. Not just for your own family, your spouse, your child, your relatives or friends, but for your neighbor and even for your perceived enemy to bring healing and satisfy everyone's hunger. Because you and I are called to have compassion for others and to act. It's that simple. Just complicated. But you and I know how complicated it is and how massive the problem of suffering from sickness, poverty, and hunger is today. It seems overwhelming. And now because of unemployment due to the present COVID-19 pandemic, up to 30 million people in the United States could be evicted from or lose their homes unless additional unemployment funds are released at once to families. The only ones who can do this now are Congress and the U.S. Senate, so we feel helpless beyond calling our own representatives and senators to, hey, do the right thing. But there is something we can do today in our own communities, which we can find in our own local newspaper, in fact. We know how many businesses in St. Paul's Midlay were burned, looted, or destroyed during the unrest after George Floyd's murder two months ago in Minneapolis. Some of the destruction was done by outsiders. Some was done by angry, distraught people, or those who have suffered for too long from poverty or violence. In St. Paul's Midway, Cub Foods, Target, and Aldi food stores were left damaged and looted. Not by local residents, because who would burn their own food source? But the result is that people who live in this community have now been left in a food desert with no grocery stores to purchase food within walking distance. It's a very big problem. Front page of yesterday's newspaper. If you can read it backwards, have fun. <laughs> Saturday Pioneer Press. So what is our response to this as people of faith who are connected as a church to this community, people? On the night of the protests and community damage done in St. Paul on May 27th, Bethlehem on the Midway Lutheran Church across the street from Target became the center of relief for medics and injured people. Bethlehem's pastor, Kristen Fryer, who is part of my pastor's text study group, had to make a decision with her church leaders to respond to something they never could have imagined just days before. So they opened their church to emergency ministry. They were compelled to act by their faith, and so were they were led by the Spirit to step up and step out. Their church became the place first for medical supplies and water to wash off tear gas. And over the next month, the Center for Donations of Food and Household Supplies for their whole community, who were suddenly left without grocery stores. From May 30th to June 8th, they distributed bags of food and baby supplies to 300 to 500 families per day, made possible by hundreds of volunteers whom they also had to feed. So they were fed by Shobi's Table, our Synod food truck on some days, and later by local restaurants whose buildings were closed or burned, but who set food out on tables in the church parking lot right there off Snelling and Roy. The work wasn't done by Bethlehem members, who mostly are older adults at risk during the pandemic, but was done by compassionate younger people, volunteers from churches throughout the St. Paul area Synod and the St. Paul community, who became the church for those days. 
Now, this ministry continues to collect donations, which are then sent to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Minneapolis or other food shelves in St. Paul, wherever there is need, because the need is not ending. It is growing. This is why we have a synod, by the way, so that faithful people from churches outside the Midway can live out their compassion by sharing with those in need. So we continue to read in this newspaper. I'll read you the uh, headline that food shelf officials prep for a new surge. The expiration of federal jobless aid and a possible surge in COVID cases is expected to increase the demand for food donations. The $600 extra dollars per week expired yesterday. Some politicians argued that Paying this extra amount was a disincentive to people to go back to work. Who thinks this stuff? But how can people go back to work to jobs that don't exist, to businesses that are closed? Some people say, we don't have enough. We can't afford to pay so many millions unemployment benefits. So are we living under a myth of scarcity or God's promise of abundance? It's getting real, folks. Now, some want more tax cuts for the wealthy. And there seems to be enough for increased defense spending and for federal agents to be sent into cities like Portland or Chicago or to keep migrant families, asylum seekers, and children in detention indefinitely. So there is money. It just depends upon your priorities. Well, our priorities come from Jesus, from our faith. It comes from our compassion for others, which comes from God and we are led by the Spirit. So there is something we can do immediately today and also in the days ahead. Our St. Paul area synod bishop, Patricia Lowell, has challenged us, all 110 congregations in our synod, to give an additional $50,000 to local food shelves to, present, pre, uh, to address the present and coming community food shelf uh, shortage in the month of August. Now that would be $500 to $1,000 per congregation this month. There is enough, you know. Now we didn't give to the local Minnesota Food Share month in March because of the COVID shutdown. So we are due. So I pass along this challenge to you. That Redeemer gives a minimum of $500 to the Halley Q. Brown Food Shelf, which is one block from Redeemer in August with a goal of $1,000. There is a great need in our own community for food. And Jesus said, you give them something to eat. You can write a check to Halley Q. Brown or Redeemer with the food shelf in the memo line and just send it to Redeemer. Do it this week and we will get it to the food shelf this month of August. We would like to have you send it to the church so that we can be accountable for our goal. We can do this. We can feed this community. I've seen many food distribution sites set up alongside Lexington Avenue in June at Bethlehem on the Midway and in the Halley Q. Brown parking lot last month, all from local donations. Like Isaiah the prophet says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come, buy and eat. Let's be part of this great miracle of faith, inspired by the words of Jesus. Be a witness to the good news of God's love where there is abundance of food for all, provided by God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing.
the Maasai Creed. We believe in the one high God who out of love created the beautiful world and everything good in it. God created humankind and wants us to be happy in the world. God loves the world and every nation and tribe on the earth. We have known this high God in darkness and now we know God in the light. God promised in the book of God's word, the Bible, that God would save the world and all the nations and tribes. We believe that God made good this promise by sending God's son, Jesus Christ, a man in the flesh, a Jew by tribe, born poor in a little village, who left his home and was always on safari doing good, curing people by the power of God, teaching about God and humankind, showing the meaning of religion is love. He was rejected by his people, tortured and nailed hands and feet to a cross and died. He lay buried in the grave, but the hyenas did not touch him. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. He ascended to the skies. He is the Lord. We believe that all our sins are forgiven through him. All who have faith in him must be sorry for their sins, be baptized in the Holy Spirit of God, live the rules of love, and share the bread together in love, to announce the good news to others until Jesus comes again. We are waiting for him. He is alive. He lives. This we believe. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager. Bless them and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. And protect forests from wildflowers, wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Especially Diane, Mary, Crystal, Anne, Colleen, Irene, Mary Lou, Sam, Tanea, and Lyric, and those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
and also with you. Let us share the peace of the Lord. Peace be with you all. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace be with you. You want to say peace? Peace to the Lord, everybody. Peace be with you, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Peace, Clifford. <laughs> yeah, peace, everybody. goodness and growth. All creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it right, is right to, right get, to give, give our, our thanks and right. praise.
Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and the animals, the seas and the stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and on this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside becomes one bread, so let the church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your son. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We believe that this, the body and blood of Jesus Christ are truly present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. So all are welcome to receive the sacrament at your Lord's table at home. So friends of Christ, come to the table, receive nourishment for your journey. As we sing the Lamb of God, you may prepare your table. Body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Joel, that's you. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks Thank be to God. Be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for joining us on Zoom today.